Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us on the AM show. And you know what we do at around this time? The big stories. We're bringing them to you and we're going to look at every corner. Uh, mind you, we're going to be exploring the bit about Ghana Beyond Politics, 60 polling station elections. You know what? How about we start from there? Joining us, Akwesi Kunadu, Member of Parliament, Manchia North. Uh, Mr. Kunadu, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining the conversation. A very good morning to you also. It's a real pleasure having you. I, I don't recall interacting with you uh, this year. So uh, I, I think I should say Happy New Year to you. Uh, Happy New Year. But I, I, I've been on the show this year. I think that was about three weeks ago. Really? Uh, myself. Uh, oh, yes. Myself and uh, my brother from Ningu Pram Pram. Yes. We had a very good interactive program, if you would, well, if you would recall. Th yes. th then, then, but but, but um, getting into your constituency and uh, things that have happened in there, it hasn't painted uh, a very rosy picture. Some people have said that these are the same things that led to your party's uh, not abysmal performance in the 2020 elections when it comes to the uh, parliamentary elections, but uh, your loss of a large number of seats. We know that... Uh, in recent times, the polling station uh, elections have actually been. And then the latest from Sunday, where the elections uh, were not able to be held in some quarters. What is your initial reaction to that? And for those who are saying this bodes ill for the party, how do you respond? Uh, let me say a very good morning again to our viewers. Uh, my initial response is one. I think within the frame, as you just put, the party put in place processes, guidelines, rules, regulations, and even our constitution that guides us, that uh, the processes would have to follow a certain procedure. And you, the individual who would want to participate in that process, may have happened. It's a matter of, if it's not my way, then it is not the right way to have been done. Mm. And that is the problem. Yes. My, my way or the, the highway. Problem. Yes, is that is either my way or the highway, as you just said, and that probably cannot be countenance in a party that has constitutions, that has rules, that has regulations that bind some of these things. You see, it, it is a certain admonition that we all must tell people that we must follow the processes as they've been given to us to the end, and where we also find ourselves following the and that you, that specific individual, can't not be given an opportunity to, to participate, but rather be brought in, rebuilt trained on the line and trained on the line such that you would not repeat those mistakes. People should begin to accept that. And that whole mentality that we also put across, that these are my people, I hold them, uh, you are touching my people and the rest, I've always said, we all come into the party as individuals. We don't come into the party with people banged onto our shoulders, giving the same uh, party cars with our pictures on one party cars with 100 people, handle them, that kind of that is where we start bringing division into our party. And when that person falls foul of the rules and regulations that we set for ourselves, and we start defending those individuals because we believe that they are our people, in quotation marks, then they are emboldened to go about the way that they go about, which is not the right way, but the highway. That is where I believe. And you see, uh, if you attribute that to, say, the value of numbers that we have in parliament now, I believe you've learned from that. I believe you may find people who still want to start step all of these things that we've talked about. But it doesn't mean that enforcing these rules not go by those rules. But those people conform to the norms and values that we have set for ourselves, the ethics. Because if I would ask you, you join the Ghana Journalist Association, if I'm right, you pay your dues to the Ghana Journalist Association so that you become a member of good standing, such that at any point in time that the Ghana Journalist Association is participating in an activity that requires members in good standing to participate, you are in. When they set the rules and guidelines that governs that process, where that if it is not my way. And however, the party's structures give us an opportunity that whenever we are not satisfied with certain decisions that people may have made within, we must go by those rules. It doesn't be hold on us that we go in and out there, bring on people in the form of tags, vigilantes, to distract the process that we have set for ourselves. 
I think it goes against the same rules that we have ourselves, uh, the laws that we have enacted for us. So, yes. so, so, so the process should be all involving. It should give equal opportunity to everybody. I mean, in some instances, we've heard, for example, how incumbents in the Ashanti region, uh, your very own chairman, Woon to me, has made payments for about a thousand of them. The incumbents, leaving those who are now trying to get in, people feel uh, the process, yes, you have options. But when you do that, you create bias. Uh, in the picking of the forms, why are some people uh, getting it and others not? It's being skewed. Uh, your director of research and elections, Evans Nemako, uh, would come and say, if you have problems, take it to the national level. Do this and do that. Are you, by all of these, not uh, stampeding the same process you speak of? And, and then now you are referring to some people as thugs? It is not that I'm referring to some people as thugs, but individuals that who are not partakers in the elections, but who would come into the constituency to distract the process is what I'm talking about. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to speak on your sister station at Sempa. They showed videos, they showed pictures of people, tax, and let me use that word, vigilantes, who were brought in to distract the process in some constituencies, and especially in mine. V vigilantes, uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Vigilantes from where? How do you identify these yeah. are vigilantes? If people who do not reside in the constituency, first and foremost, who have not picked forms in the constituency to participate in the process, are brought in outside the constituency, what we term as metro men. What does Ali Adega mean to do in the constituency? Are these people that, that, you, you, that can, are these people from within your party? This is the party office. This is where nomination forms were being given. This is the very first day that the process is started. Have you seen were there any chaos? This is the committee chairman and the committee members speaking to the people before the process. Were there any chaos? But just after that process, people were brought in because there is not going to be any distribution of forms. The, 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 when the, you the, showed the, the video. Uh, Akwesi, this is getting very interesting, your rhetoric. You say uh, people were brought in, so with certain interest. Who brought these people in? And I ask you again, these vigilantes, are they MPP members then? They are not. Because they have not picked forms even to contest in the, uh, in the polling station elections. No, no but, but if you say because they hadn't picked forms, they were not MPP members. Are you saying merely because they hadn't picked forms? They, I mean, what is their interest in there? That is what you should also be asking. If you have not picked forms and people are picking forms, if people are submitting their forms to be vetted, if the processes has ended and we are going for polling station elections and you have not picked forms, you, are don't, you don't vote in that polling station. Somebody brings you in 207 buses. Who brought them in the 207 buses? I think this matter has been discussed. You see, let me tell you. No, you no, no. I, I, am, I, am, you I am actually oblivious to this information. So if you can rehash and it, is, who brought them in the 207 is, buses? And that is what I'm going to tell you. Right. Whenever there is an issue between two individuals and the truth is being told, people feel like it's because you have an issue with yourself and somebody. Right. You see, the whole process after the picking of nomination forms, my brother, ended up with the vetting. And the elections committee, which also formed the vetting committee, went through the documents that were presented to them. The report that we all have now indicates that there were people who forged party cards. And if your producers, your co-producers or other people do have them, put those pictures and those forms on your screen for people to observe. Where you have somebody who has a 2014 membership card, supposedly issued by the party itself, but the person's picture on the 2014 MPP membership card is the 2020 Electoral Commission's Voters Register ID card's picture mm. that finds its way onto a 2014 MPP membership card. Would you and myself believe that that party card is genuine? When you have somebody whose nomination form that a person is filling, the, the picture that a person used in filling that form, is the same picture on the 2010 MPP supposedly issued forms at the supposed polling stations that they were going to contest. And the matters were laid bare today because you must first and foremost know that in falsifying identification cards, in falsifying these things, these are purely criminal matters also. And when these things are brought to your attention and because on that basis you cannot contest, and you still believe that you can put yourselves together and cause mayhem, do you think these things are fair and these things are right? And because they feel like We've done all of these things the committee has seen and the committee have told us that we cannot on this, on this basis contest. 
we still have to pull our way through by bringing on board all of these individuals to distract the process and the rest, and that is fair. No, that cannot be said to be fair. And when, because of denied people, people are not being denied, but people are only being told to do what is right. If we cannot start telling people to do what is right, for them to go by the rules and regulations, that is where we have future problems within ourselves. And that cannot be right. And that cannot be countenance. And that cannot be seen to be left to go hanging that way. Yes. Let, 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 let me draw your attention uh, to, to something that former Energy Minister Bwache Jako has been saying. And he has reiterated that you must be open enough as a party to be all involving, all encompassing, allow, uh, allow everybody to have their say, even at the grassroots, because, Akwesi, this is polling station level. This is, this is the bottom, grassroots, branch, okay? So polling station, electoral area, before you climb, constituency region, before you come to national. And if this is what is panning out, then it is hugely problematic. I, I'm just trying to get that story even uh, from myjoyonline.com, just to quote uh, what he says. He cites the new Ibrim uh, constituency and the Duduraso uh, incident, uh, for example. And, and I'm still talking about the same issue. And he talks about the fact that he wants the NEC uh, to act on uh, the matter. And, and, and he says this doesn't bode well for your party. So, uh, yeah, okay, so I've got the quote here. He says, National Executive and National Council must stop the indifference, the hypocrisy. We know people are breaking the law, but we seem to be unconcerned. Uh, I, I, and, and, they, and they seem to be a bit detached. Is the neck the way to solve the problem? The neck has always solved the problems of this party. Let me tell you. When uh, no, no, no. Can, can you go back? I didn't neck. quite get to you. Did you say the neck cannot resolve the problems uh, of the party? Is that what you said? The neck, I said the neck has always resolved the problems of this party. Okay. Because when this process started, it started with the neck. The neck gave the rules, the neck gave the guidelines, the neck gave everything that was that. Even when it's we okay. talk about we want to have an all-inclusive nature, it doesn't mean we must sidestep the decisions that we all have reached at at neck. It doesn't mean we must sidestep the constitution that we do have. The constitution must guide us. The rules that we set for ourselves must guide us. The rules, the regulations, the guidelines, the principles must also guide us. You see, when you want to have, let me just say a very simple question. We talk about doctor, uh, whatever the, the dental and medical council are doing, whatever the nursing and midwifery council are doing, that you have to regulate the system, make sure that there are guidelines so that people who enter meet a certain requirement and rest, we must all throw those things agile. And that whenever anybody says, I am a nurse, or picks the stethoscope and put onto the person, that the person therefore goes into a consult room and start attending to patients. No, there must be rules and regulations that guide everything that we do. And that is what the NEC has always done. If we as people within the party will follow these decisions of NEC, we would never have problems in our party. Because the NEC has always been apt. All right. The National uh, Council uh, has always, right, our conferences right. has always. All right. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Nimako has, uh, has been alluding to that, pointing to the fact that those with grievances should forward those grievances uh, to the higher echelons of the party. But, but, but right before I bring in uh, Sam George, Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. Akwesi, I do want to find out uh, from you. So uh, uh, it's been said the, the national, the, the youth organizer, constituency youth organizer in Manchian, what is the military doing there? Uh, what is your take on that? Because they feel threatened. They feel we don't need uh, these officials uh, at, at that level or, or at any level in these elections. How do you feel about the involvement of, you know, the military and the police in such elections, uh, some of which have not come off? When, when the military, our security agencies pick information and intelligence, they act on those intelligence and information they pick. That is the first thing we must understand. So when they see what vigilantes, when they see these bodybuilders, when they see these mature men brought in to disrupt processes that brings about chaos in areas, not once areas, it is the duty of them to curb all of these chaotic scenes and the rest. 
they are not there to intimidate people. They, they are not there. They are only law enforcement agencies to bring about strictness to the rules that governs us as a people. So when they pick their intelligence and they follow that intelligence and they meet those situations, is it therefore to assume that people like them were behind these metro men and these people that were brought in to disrupt the process? Always bag our security agencies when they pick intelligence to act on them. Because you see, we cannot also leave uh, our law-abiding citizens who are going to polling stations to cast their votes for people so that they may have become polling station executives in some uh, polling stations. That people think that in their mind it wasn't their way and they have done something that they needed not to have done and they were not supposed to have done and they were not allowed to also participate. And that if they are not allowed, then the process is not going to go and then start causing chaos and, and mayhem. And they, and, they, and they pick information and they go to act on them and you feel that that is intimidation. Then I beg to differ. That is not intimidation. That is, that is not. All right. When you bring in tax and they are, they are being kept not to... For me, Akwesi, and it's been, you know, insightful, uh, some of the thoughts that you've shared up to this point. Let me bring in Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pam, uh, Sam Gyata, uh, George. In, in your uh, language, what, what, what do you... What, is it Dangbe? Yes, Dangbe. How, how would you say uh, welcome aboard? Moe. Moe. Mohe. Mohe. Okay. Uh, Ejasam. Mohe. Uchumka. Kawawembi. Right. Uh, you, 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 you respond ange. Ange. Yes. Meaning okay, I'm so asking about the people at home here. How are they? Let, let's, let's do this again. <laughs> uh, Ejasam. Mohe. E. Kawawembi. Ange. Yes. All right. All right. All right. We, we got that one right. We got that one right. Thank you so much for joining. What's your quick reflection on these polling station issues in the MPP? I mean, I've seen so many things. Uh, Evans Demarco saying we must resort to internal resolution mechanisms. Uh, 400 nominations rejected by the MPP. I'm talking about the polling process, uh, polling station process. Uh, cracking the whip, that's according to the MPP's uh, Deputy General Secretary. Uh, and then we have the Sifia Contombra. MPP accusing their chairman and the minister for undermining the party's progress. So Kwesi uh, Kunedu you know, has, has been responding to issues. What does this point to? Let me say a very good morning to our viewers and um, let me say a happy um, International Women's Day post to our women. The whole month is celebrating women and we're looking to break the bias. I'm going to be very very blunt on the issues about, um, of the processes, the internal political processes. The times when persons have hijacked these processes to frustrate the entire process for partisan or parochial interest. What we've seen over the past few days and weeks in various constituencies across the country even in my constituency, which... Yes, yes in, there, was, there was that in, incident. In, yeah. In, yeah. In, by God's grace, for as long as my people give me the mandate, the NPP will never even dream of winning because we will continue to deliver the votes for the NDC. Even there... Have a tight scrape for you the last time. We'll get there. Within your own party. We, 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 so, we, so we'll that. get there. We'll get there. It was not necessarily just my party. There were several <laughs> forces at play. You know, forces even, at play. Oh, even, even people who are today MPs on the MPP side have met me and said, Charlie, you, you're a tough kid because we were all sent in there to come and work against you in your internal primaries. But I mean, that's a different question. Exactly. Oh, yeah. it's a different, it goes beyond. It's a different uh, conversation. I didn't go what, up against what one guy. Eh? Yeah, yeah, but, but it's okay. fine. That, that's a different conversation. But right. the point must be made about the fact that safe seats, it's even worse. Mm. Now, reason, and, I, and I'm being careful here, and I said I was going to be blunt. This is not peculiar to the MPP. Right. That's why I said political parties, because it happens in the NDC. Look, as sitting in... And I would have been surprised if you had painted the picture that I mean, this is just look, an MPP some things problem. are there, some things are there, we just need to be blunt about them. As sitting MP, me, as a sitting MP, when I was seeking re-election, mm. because my constituency chairman was contesting me in that primary. Mm -hmm. And the secretary was for him. Yeah. I didn't get forms to buy in my constituency. Me, sitting MP. Hey. Yes. So you mean me, in the last... In, yes, that, the last primary, 2019. 20, 20, 2019, leading into 2020. 2019 primaries, yes. I had to come to national. And then national called region to hand me forms. Wow. A sitting MP. Yes. 
Is, is that the first? I, yes, as the sitting MP, because the person <laughs> who wanted to contest me was the chairman at the time, and the party handed the forms over to him. Of course. You get it. So, and he so resigned. In other words, he, mafia resigned, he resigned and he tried mafia, but I know go free mafia the lion. I got my forms. And I beat him at the elections. But like okay, again, so, so that's yes, a side issue. But but right. I'm saying that it is not peculiar to one political party. And the reason we do this, pulling station executives as the MPP call them, or branch executives as the NDC call them, all clamoring to become pulling station or branch executives. The question is why? Simply because of constituency primaries and, 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 and parliamentary primaries. That's all. Yeah. And, and, and the influence of it, right? Because, because once, that you is where... once you are a branch executive, you are a kingmaker. So when the time comes, in Dangbe, they will tell you, Eminati, Nimuyedu. Mm. Because for them, it is largely and literally about how much you can pay and how much who is given. That, that is their cocoa season. That is That's where you get to grab. The, the, the one who wants to be king must come and see the king makers. Absolutely. Kingmakers. You have, you have a thing about the winner. It's, it's also because you've fight. sustained it, right? That's you've made it saying. lucrative for it them. It is an unsustainable enterprise we've engaged in. The monetization of our politics is going to be the downfall of our democracy. We're going to get to a place where criminals, criminals will bring in loots from their crime and come and use it to buy political office mm. to legitimize their criminal enterprise. That is where we are going. Until and unless the political parties across board sit back and look at how to demonetize our political space, we are in for major crisis. Look, wow. there is hardly any MP mm. on, their, on getting elected as member of parliament through their primaries and their general election. If you take their four years salary put together, we'd we'll be able to, it's less than that. Everybody, if you take our four year salary without taxes, forget taxes, forget the, the Land Cruiser loan that we are paying, forget all the deductions from our side. If you take our so, gross, so the lump, the gross. The gross amount and multiply it by 48 months, I'm saying that it would not be up to what any of the 275 of us sitting in. Dixon and uh, yes. Dr. Dixon the other day. And trust me, some of what they told me. Shot me to the marrow of my bone. And that's why, that's why I'm saying that, look, it's something many of my colleagues will not want to talk about. But me, I say it as it is. The reality is our political system will be the downfall of this democracy. If we say we love this fourth republic. Look, in 92 and 96, party folks bought T-shirts to support the candidate. The candidate, when you print your T-shirt, the campaign and they use the candidate use that money to run the campaign today how come how come, today, how, how, how come we were not able to sustain that a lot, and of, today a lot of the we've... monetization started in 2000 and 2004 especially unfortunately and it has gotten what, worse what brought it about well i mean there you may end up going into all the partisanship and all of those things but that's the reality we saw the monetization of our politics start in 2000 especially in 2004 but you see the problem is today you even take when you print the t-shirt and take it you have to add money to it before the person will take it so you see how we have moved to stand there what your cost is the cost of getting a pa system and hiring a hall to do your campaign you don't give anybody anything but here you share from fertilizer to snake venom to 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 I mean, I, it's just unbelievable the kinds of expenses we have to go. And someone will say, well, and then if you are complaining, shut up and get out. The next person coming in is coming in to do it. And that's the problem. And maybe and even so, worse. Absolutely. And so that's why people will kill themselves. And the, the, the sad part is when it comes to the real party work, real party work, many of these branch executives or police station executives, you won't see them on election day. On election day, parliamentary candidates then have to go and look for People they can trust and pay to work and do mobilization, which is supposed to be the job of these police station executives. So what is the need of these police station executives apart from the cocoa season of constituency elections and, 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 and the uh, 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 parliamentary So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. The, the political that, that parties hmm. need to come together and develop a roadmap. And that's why I Can you do happy. that? I was happy when... No, can you do that? It's NBC and MPP and, and the other it's parties. Possible. It's possible. In 2015, the primaries that brought me into office, the one between myself and Honorable Ethan, right. you had a system that was piloted by the NDC, a card-holding member of the party to vote. So in Every card-holding yes. member. 
So in that election, there were 16,752 delegates on the election, on the, on, the, on the register. Quite a number. It was impossible for you to give everybody money. Right. You understand me? Right. So, so you couldn't pay. My last primary, there were eight, when, we, when they reversed it and went back to the polling station, just the 999, mm. there were 870 people. Ho, ho, it's easy, ho, ho. It's easy to take 870 people, right. come them, and let them demand 5,000 or 3,000 or 2,000 right. or 1,000. I, 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 I get exactly what you're saying. Just hold it right there. I'll come back to you. I can see. Uh, what, what do you think about that suggestion? Is it something that you feel your party could take advantage of? Very quickly on that. Sure, why not? That is why you need to start even screening it now. Even when you have limited numbers now and you don't want to talk about the identification of these individuals, putting them into proper database so that you right. can have those specific numbers. That is where even you start to get some of these problems. Where you open it up, like what my brother Sam talked about, that he has 16,000 in 2015. Why did they come back to the 870? It's because the identification of all of these 16,000, I think, became problematic for them. Mm. Because people then sit back, like what I just told you, forge cards, I hold a card. So if you don't have a strong database to take care of all of these things, then that becomes a problem. But when we are able to do all of these things and open it up, I think, just as he said, we'll be able to lock down on some of these over expenditures that are being so, made. So if you, could, if you could interact with your neck or, I mean establishment in your party, would you put forth the suggestion to them that maybe we ought to practice that to stem the tide of monetary influence or monetizing our elections? Because like Sam George is saying, if we keep up like this, I mean, you could have a criminal, so to speak, in parliament, legislating, making laws that will suit. Can you imagine the hijack of the system if we had criminals in, in parliament? Uh, I, I don't want to say certain things because I might, uh, you know, impugn uh, parliament, but what do you think? Is, is there something you're this going to push? You see, this consideration about openness is, uh, is with the party for a very long time. Because even if you look at how even our system has evolved, especially even in terms of the selection of our members of parliament and the selection of our presidential candidate. Initially, for the selection of our members of parliament, it was only the polling station chairman that voted in those elections. Now, every single executive at the polling station does so. Mm. With uh, our presidential, it was only 10 executives from each constituency that did so. But now, every single polling station executive in the party votes in the presidential. It has increased the numbers to over 200 and something thousand people who are doing that. So that expansion process has always been under consideration within the party. And that is being done. But you see, whilst you do that, you must also be able to identify where there are loopholes so that you can bridge them. The mere fact that you want everybody to come on board, you must not also throw your door ajar. Then we still go ahead to find ways to identify all of our individuals who are Ghanaians and who are 18 years, mm. so as to be able to register them and vote. So we can reflect that, that in, the, in, in the in the minuscule processes as well, at the micro level, right? Yes, whilst we are exploring that, we need also to be putting in place guidelines that would have to shape all of these things. The fact that you don't open doesn't mean you just have to open it agile without any sort of protection. Otherwise, that would also bring another chaotic situation. Okay. But however, since it's under consideration, it has always been improving. I know it's going to improve and get to a better shape than we have it now. Okay. All right. Uh, th thanks, thanks for that uh, top up. I know you want to react yes. to what he yes. said. Yes. Yes. And, and, and then when you're done reacting, let's look at the way forward. Apart from what you've said, how do we structure our parties to get past this hurdle? You see, for me... The, 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 that's why I, when I started with the process in 2015, the NDC adopted, I said it wasn't a perfect system, but I thought we could have made it better. Right. The problem with that system and why there was a clamor within the NDC that won for us to revert to the old system was people said there was infiltration of the database by even MPP people. True. Why? We did that registration barely three months to the primaries. So, so not there enough time to exactly, verify and all of that. There was an incentive for persons to pad with the registration database with people they knew. Now, if we start this process four clear years to an election of building this database, and it's not just going to be a database of persons who are, who are present or holding a card. 
where you just get anybody who is a candidate going to buy a series of cards and registering people and just putting their names in there, trying to get those people to go and vote for him or her. What you do is you make sure it is members in good standing. Mm. So members in good standing will be determined by your attendance at right. branch meetings, right. by your payment of paid monthly up, dues. Your paid up member. Because if you leave it at only payment of dues, again, the money bags will come in. I can register 10,000 people. The dues is one CD a month. So that's 10,000 10, CDs. 10, CDs every month. If you right. make it two CDs, 20,000 CDs 120, a month. 120,000 CDs can pay, a year. I can pay, I can pay 120,000 CDs a year and, and keep waiting because I know that that assures me 10,000 votes. So the money back's coming. But the point is, apart from payment of dues, you look at their attendance at branch meetings and then parliamentary primaries. It's the only way we can go. Look, like Akosi said, in the NDC to our presidential elections, uh, flag membership elections, are voted for by over 300, almost 300,000 people. Mm. How, can, how can any presidential candidate tell me he's going to buy or bribe all the 300,000 people? Right. At first, it used to be a very small number, less than, less than 10, 5, 3,000 people who will come into a stadium and then all kinds of influencing happens. Now we've opened it up. Why are they struggling to do the same for the parliamentary elections? Look, unless we all call a spade, and unless the electoral commission, the laws exist. Political financing laws taking the former member of parliament who said he paid 5,000 Exactly. For, then the OSP should be ready to come and take more than half of members of parliament. Oh, really? I'm telling you. Look, if you want to... But, but, but he, he went out and said that's it. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> he mean, has been... The, the, was, 11th, the 11th commandment, was, don't he, get caught. He was, in quotes, <laughs> frustrated by that payment and the fact that he still didn't win, that he went and spoke. But the people who are not speaking are more than the one who are spoken. Right. I'm saying that... The money that gets spent, the obscene amount. Ah, but have you forgotten in the last primaries? Lights, because that was not the intent. It wasn't. Maslock has never done table top distribution of money. Mm. But right. when they got to an election season, it was prudent to do those kind. I mean, those kind of obscene things, the kind of monetization. Look, Chief, me are there inside. I'm inside the soup. I'm not innocent. We are all guilty because if you don't do it, you get kicked out. Okay. That's your reality. It is the reality. Hard truth. But until and unless we all come together, I have started one campaign where me in my constituency, if you come and campaign in your, in your area and you tell me, MP, promise me you'll fix the road. I'll tell you point blank, I can't fix the road. Because again, MPs go and make that kind of promise. And, and I'll that, fix that the doesn't road. even I'll lie in your, your, your... You don't have the power to do it. Why do you lie to the people? The twins came on Twitter and defended me and said, as for this our MP, he will never promise you a road. Okay. Because so, so, until so, and unless MPs decide, and the political class, not just MPs, the political class, we begin to be factual and honest with the people, we will always be at the receiving end. At the point that MPs become beggars, running around, looking right, for money. I right. mean, look, look at what is happening. This chaos is unnecessary. And, and, and that can only breed criminality. Criminal, because, it's criminal uh, I mean, who, who will be lobbying the MP, giving the MP money? And when, when you get into position, how will that person the, benefit criminal, and all of that? If the criminal doesn't so want to come parliament you. himself, he will fund you. Use, a puppet. You, yeah, puppet strings. They pull their strings and then you dance. Uh, I, I just want us to quickly wrap on this, but but quickly, very quickly, but let's, before, let we, just, before we look at. Let me just say no, that. no, no, no. Just, it's, not, it's not peculiar to Ligana. Ghana. It's happening in the UK too. Oh, oh, the right. Russian, the Russian oligarchs. As for that one, I, I know <laughs> they are struggling with Russian money. How to deal with it? Even the Germans are the Germans, struggling the with the Germans, the Italians, uh, the French, know, Russian gas, and all of that, you and know, business. So. <laughs> but but the United States, don't you forget? Yeah. Even there, real Even estate. The States, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But, but, the but and for me now, what happened there, where supposedly some members went and, and uh, you know, painted the party office with NDC cards? You know, you know, uh, what is your quick reaction? Like, yes, some yes. one minute, 30 seconds. You know, you know I have been saying that this has made it an NDC MPP thing. Mm. It shouldn't be. The media should be questioning my very good friend and classmate, Andre Siama, second ah. deputy speaker. Member of Parliament for Fomena. Absolutely. Why? He is meant, he was voted for by the people of Fomena as an independent candidate. But, but as an independent candidate, he must, he must place himself. Don't forget, candidate Akufado, President Akufado at the time, mm. went to Fomena, mm. put up a candidate, and told the people of Fomena that he cannot work with Andrew Siyama. Mm. And so they should vote for the MPP candidate. The people of Fomena... But that was campaign rhetoric. No, the people of Fomena listened to the president voted for the president, but voted against his candidate and said, look, in parliament, we want a candidate who would represent the people of Formina, not one who will go and do the whims and caprices of the MPP. 
If they wanted one who would do the whims and caprices of the MP, they would have voted for the NPP candidate. And Siyama owes it to the people of Fomina that on every national issue, critical national issue, he would represent the interest of the people of Fomina not to align one way. I'm not asking him to come but, and align. But, 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 I'm but, but, not no, asking no, no, I, I, a critical issue. He owes it to his people. Who took the bold decision to make him an independent candidate? I to go back and find out I, on E-Levy, for example, Sam, what is the position of the people of Fomina? Sam, I get, I get the point. Will vote on that principle. I get the point you're making. Principle, yes. But we've because, left him. Because, we've left because him. he is and right now, practically. Right now, what he's doing is an affront to the whole principle of independent candidates in parliament. Let me just ask because you. Because right this. now, he's basically, in quote, politically prostituting himself off to the MPP. He is a, a majority. And a minority. No, you don't. Well, why not? You don't need to have a majority. You must have a majority. a majority and a minority. No. You keep talking about no. Uh, uh, what a hand pile of have, what You, you must have, have both no. sides. What you need to have is a government side and an opposition side. So you have the leader of government business. That's the proper designation for the person who is on the side, even if the MPP had only 130 members of parliament. Mm -hmm. The leader of the MPP would have been called the leader of government business because you wouldn't have expected if NDC had 145 seats. Right. Okay, in and parliament. And they had less. And they had less. Haruna Idrisu will not be the one But, but is it not just, is it not a majority side and a minority side? And, and there must be, you know, you a clear cut the, delineation. The majority and minority sides that you refer to is the semantics. But the reality on the ground is you must have a government side with a leader of government business that pushes government agenda. Whether they have the numbers, majority number or minority number, they are government side. And then you have the opposition. That is actually how parliaments are structured. And so an independent candidate need not align himself in perpetuity with one side. His independence is only determined. You can't tell me that you are independent. Yet every time you are MP, the, the member of parliament for form, not second deputy speaker, he must begin to show and assert his independence. If he wants to be on the MPP side, he should resign from parliament as an independent candidate, go back and contest the by election as an MPP candidate, and come and align with the MPP. But All at right. this point in time, he is abusing the principle of an independent candidate in parliament. And, and the MPP has even called uh, for him to be uncontested as he stands for the MPP. Ah, so he, in, 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 well, some, some members. Uh, but, but well, he. Uh, a party office of yours was actually painted in NDC uh, colors. Uh, how do you react to that? Uh, first and foremost, if you move to Formula now, there is no MPP party office there that is painted in NDC colors. Even if it was, it is not so now. But let me go straight to the point. You see how my brother is I, Are you disputing that this I, happened? Are you disputing that this happened? Is that, is that, is that what your I, point? What, what I just told you is that even if it did, it is not so as we speak this morning. That is what I'm saying. But that, that, that doesn't also, take away the fact that it was. And that also, also doesn't take away the fact... Go to the point of painting an MPP political party office in, in the colors of, of, of the opposition party, the main opposition party. What does that tell you? And when those people that you say are disgruntled enough revert that decision of seeing of what they did was wrong. What is also about that? You're now, suggesting that the same people who went and did the painting in the first instance are the same people who went to do the repainting? It was about trying to explain and try So please to clarify briefly on this one. Uh, briefly clarify. What is he confusing? Yes. Yes, why? Our standing orders are clear. Our standing orders does not talk about an independent person in parliament. It talks about two groupings, two caucuses in parliament. You either belong to one or the other. Is either the majority side or the minority groupings? That is straightforward. If you talk about leader of government business, that is a purely different matter from what we have in parliament. That is where one person wears two hats. The person is the majority leader. That is, he leads the group that has the largest number in parliament. That is what our standing orders talk about. Then you have the person, if that same person so is given the role to lead government business, so be it. But you cannot confuse the two. But however, when he has a difficulty in explaining that is this, he talks about he was voted as an independent candidate. The president went to Formina, held somebody's heart. The people understood the president, agreed with him, voted for the president, and voted for an independent candidate. Therefore, it stands to reason now that if the good people of Formina voted for, and therefore must also support the policies of the president, I'm not even coming to parliament support the decisions and the policies of the president because the people in Formina voted for the president. They believe 
in the policies that the president put out there. They believe in the programs that the, the but, president... But, but, but they also they sought to vote for an independent candidate uh, for whom to that same president, so. for whom that same president they voted for, had said, I cannot work with him, that he has ostracized himself and he does not belong to us. Don't vote for him. Is that not a dichotomy? That is where the beauty then lies in the decision the people in Formina took. Then they could have also chosen not to even vote for the president at all. But they voted for the president and voted for that independent person to go support the president. But have you ever heard, even during, if the president supposedly even said that when he was on campaign, did you ever hear that the person who stood, the independent candidate, ever said he cannot work with the president if he is also voted for? Let us distinguish the two. Let us distinguish parliamentary parties from executive parties. That is what my brother, I believe he is my senior in parliament and must understand that very clearly. When you are talking about parliament, we are not talking about an independent. The rules of our game, the rules of our game you must belong to. So you cannot sit here now and say that a person must not be standing in between and no. Yes, even when he in some joy belongs to the NDC, when there are decisions that are being taken in parliament and his major group is the minority group is take a stand, he must he can, I must say he can descend from what the majority group uh, the minority group is saying. That is not a crime. The mere fact that you choose to work with a grouping does not matter. If you are saying, Chrissy, please, if, if what I'm just saying simply is this, that yes, he can say he's going to do business with you on this issue. Yes. When another issue comes, the same way you said, I can disagree with my caucus. There have been times caucuses have worked out and some one or two members have sat in the chamber from that same caucus. It means that they've not gone along with the full position of the caucus. And that's why I'm saying that the Formula MP should be in a position, his independence will be shown, when on a matter he will say, look, even though I'm tied in perpetuity to that's one that, side. No. That is where, wait, that is where you are having a problem. If the person has not found reason or cause to disassociate from that decision, why must you, in your view, think that the person must? It, it will be very intelligent for us to suggest that the MPP view, since he came to Parliament over the past 14 months, the MPP... Also always being with your caucus. Always opposed... That's not correct. The, That's not I, correct. I can give you a typical wait. example. I can give you a typical example. It's not a very favorable example. Language. But with the vetting of your ministers... I can see, hold on. Hold on for me. With the, with the vetting of your ministers, for example, you saw that in our caucus, not everybody voted along, along a certain line. That is where you saw reason and cause in the decision that the majority caucuses also took. That is why you came to join on board. But, but that's exactly the point he's saying. He's basically saying that your, 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 this independent member of parliament seems to be bereft of the ability to stand in and represent his constituency, that, that he is a rubber stamp, basically. That's what he's saying. But Sam John... Don't use those words. In my candid opinion, if you can, if you use the word, the word be read and the rest, please, no. If the person, why are we making an argument that if I have not seen and found reason or a cause to disassociate from a decision that a certain grouping is taking, I must, so that you, stand, standing by, will see me as an independent person, or you see me that I have now reason, it even becomes an insult to me. That brings me that, 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 that. Right. That, that brings me to another uh, crucial point that we've tabled for discussion. And, and I just want to find out from both of you gentlemen. Is it possible in this Fourth Republic for especially the NDC and the MPP, uh, like we would have Labour and Conservatives in the UK, to, to come together? And, and so interacting with Lise Fonasanti, if you've been long in the media space, you would know what she represents. And she said, for example, that we need a plan as a country, our NDPC, we keep playing football with it, and this one comes and does that, this one comes and proposes that, we need a long-term plan. Is there a way, especially now, when we're looking at um, converge in terms of ideas and move the country forward? I just saw a message on Facebook, and the person was talking about the fact that when will Africans stop and start thinking, put heads together and build our country instead of unnecessary quarreling? Is that even... We always paint ourselves in a certain picture that I find unfortunate. Which picture is when that? One thing is, that is it, when you immediately put, is it possible? I see if it, it's never been possible or it's not possible. Well, well you've, not, you've, not shown, you've not shown too much to events that it is very if, possible. If I, the, if, the next thing we see I'll is that we see you guys yeah. fighting in Parliament.
you know, I will probably be able to allow to do that. Whilst we engage in all of these discussions that we are doing right now, we are having ideas, we are having discourses, we are having interactions that would help us arrive at a certain destination that we would all want to be. Right. That is the possibility in a situation. The whole idea about all of us being in politics is to drive this country towards growth and development, prosperity for each and every individual. That is all that both of us, in all political parties, every single person is achieving that. It calls for different ideas as to how to be able to get there. Once you want to move from Accra to Kumas, you can come by road, you can come by rail, if indeed we have, you can even come by uh, air, mode of transportation. Let's take this mode of... It doesn't mean we are not having a convergence or what, but we are sharing ideas. But immediately we tell ourselves that, oh, is it possible, is it possible? We are only telling ourselves even to stop the discussions that we do, even to, to stop the, uh, the sort of uh, arguments that we do to bring about ideas in ourselves to engineers. So Discussing many, so ideas does not bring uh, unity, and obviously it's not served as well in the Fourth Republic. That's why we have so many elephant projects if, that have not been completed. It, My if, question is consensus. How do we find that consensus as if, a country so that regardless of our political differences, we can bring development to the country. That's, that's what I mean. How do we get beyond the politics? Immediately you talk about discussing ideas that doesn't bring unity. I mean, you've defeated even the point of unity. No, you're not, you're not getting my point. I'm saying that you can discuss ideas so and, right. still, and, still yes. be, and still be intransigent. Have you always been intransigent? Most of the time, Prove are you me not? That we have, I mean, how many times would you say that uh, the, the, the NDC or the MPP, <laughs> they, they, they differ from what, what the generality of the party members are, are looking at or it, voting for? How many times? It, in as much as I disagree with the use of your word most of the times, it's look at where we've agreed to move forward and continuously pursue that. Okay. Let us continuously engage ourselves in productive discussions as we do always, find solutions to the challenges that we face, and move on. Just as we have been able to be discussing this matter, that is why we are able to raise issues about maybe a certain project that has not been completed in time to draw attention to those who are, to find people who are now in the position to drive, who are to drive these projects to a certain conclusion, go on to these projects, give assurances, start the projects as where they are to always continue. Let us agree on these things, that in these discussions that we make, they bring about unity consensus so that we can move forward. Okay. If not all the time, but most of the time, as you even say, that we are moving forward, then we are moving in. How do we, you know, sort these things out? Because I want to tie it to what you even said about the polling station level things. And so there must be some agreement between political parties at some point. Actually, let's do our politics in this way. It's not helping the country. How do we go beyond the politics? Do you want me to be honest or political? Be correct? brutally honest. Ben. No. Hey, Sam. And so the peace contractors must all stop. It won't happen. The peace contractors must stop. Mm. Ah, those who are running around claiming they can bring peace between the caucus, they should stop. We won't. Why? You said I should be brutally honest. Yeah, yeah, but I'm because asking the why. There must be a have been very dishonest with us. They've not been forthright. Come with candle to the table. On this E-Levy, there have been several attempts for us to find a middle ground. You finish a meeting with them, they turn around and stab you in the back. Several times. Several times on the floor, I'm going to read the hands out. You will hear Harun Idris to stand up and say, but Chairman, and this is not what we agreed in concrete. And, and, and I, I do recall that you've had some of those instances. Absolutely. But, but, but there's no to do any compromise or anything. Every single decision, we will vote on it. We will vote 137 to 137. But, 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 but then if they I, don't have their numbers, then that is why that, the whole but, of... But, but then, your, your station interviewed me yesterday. The whole right. of this, this year, seven, seven weeks in Parliament. Parliament has not done any government business. They can't bring anything right. because because they have worked with. You're saying even beyond 2025, we are not going to see well, any. Beyond 2025, NDC will have a majority no, 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 no. in parliament. Even, even if even if yeah. even if even if that happens, mm. uh, they will also do you bugabuga. The same thing you've done but to them. We, will have, to the, we will have the numbers to pass it without them. Yes. But that would also mean you we would sidestep them, and and that is the problem with our because Alex bunch. They are not an honest bunch. They never stick to their side of the bargain. That is the problem of the NPP. The NPP thinks they are smarter than everybody. Look, the NDC went into, into negotiations on a certain time. And you saw how Haruna took a flag for it. Where we, you, how do you go into a negotiations on ELB, for example? And I'm using that as an example. The NDC's position was 0%. We come to a negotiation, decide to move their positions. Kenoforiata came and said, me, I will never move. They've moved from 1.75 to 1.5. 
they've, when, they've, when, they've, when, they've cut, they've cut when budget after, expenditure after, by twenty percent. Uh, uh, please, please, that one is is English. Which part of the budget have they cut by twenty percent? No, 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 no. It, it have, must come through Parliament. Yes. Have they shown but, you which part of the budget they are cutting by twenty percent? But, but that is what the finance minister said. That's why I said it's English. It's hot air. It's hot air. Can Oforiata's focus by pickpocketing? Is not you, you are referencing. Is, no, no, no. You are referencing his alma mater is and all of that. Is, is it fair? Is it fair for you told, to? Were we not I mean, told? Were we not told that when he was being made finance minister? Were we not told that he's a Yale graduate and so he knows how to do it well? So his economic. So you must drag his alma mater into this. I'm not drag his alma mater. Is he not a Yale graduate? He's an a Yale inspired. And this policy is pickpocketing, a thievery, and that's all he's interested in. And that's why I'm saying that, look, so long as the NPP will not come with candor, the NPP will not put the national interest in consideration. What they put in consideration is their partisan... The final answer is that between now and 2025, any agreement, Yamutu? Final answer. Let, uh, let, me, let me tell uh, you. Sam, say, uh, Sebio, and Sam, now we're discussing it, and then he's basically it, okay. saying that no, nothing will move, nothing will push, nothing will go back till 2025. So no, we're not, we're not quick, having any discussions. Quick, quick, quick. The attitude and the posture that will keep them in opposition. It if you sit on national television and with this sort of penchant and mood, you tell them, you tell everybody that no matter what we do, no matter what happens, we are never going to have an agreement so that this country, the people that you represent, would have certain clear minds. You get into power, you cannot build consensus with the people that will bring you to power. So I'm only telling him, regardless of what his position is, regardless of what he thinks he is going to do, this country will move forward. Parliament is going to always build consensus. And that is there. And even the people that also sent him there, because we represent the whole country. It is not about his rhetoric, and it is not about his mood of whatever he want to assume now to tell everybody that it will never happen. And we've told our leadership. You don't sit on national television and sound a certain warning even to your leadership. It doesn't foster well within your own flanks. That is not right. And if my brother, my senior in parliament, would take this piece of advice, it would be helpful for everybody. Even in either harsher but milder in expression than the attitude that he just put up. You could have even said it would be very difficult. From but, the but, 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 but he promised, to be fair. Wait, he promised, wait, he promised wait, it with whether wait. I wanted him to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, wait. I have to be fair to all parties. He promised it with whether I wanted him to be honest. And I said I wanted him to be brutally honest. But be, <laughs> That's his brutal, yeah, brutal honesty. Br br brutally honest. And the attitude that you show and the words that you choose to show to the persons and the Ghanaians that are listening to us right. also goes to inform your intent and whatever these people, and you would never agree, and you've even sent warnings to your leadership. I bet you, Tilifa, I think my brother went very, very low on this. If he would agree with me, if he would not, I have no problem. It is his choice of words, it's what he would want to say. I, I don't begrudge him for that. But uh, I uh, Sam George, would you, would, would you have any apologies for what you've said? When he, very Akwesi, briefly. When he, Akwesi Konedu, walked out of the, on the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumani Bagman, was it his leaders who asked him? You see, it is this hypocrisy of politicians. Acquisition hypocrisy. And your leader was sitting in the chair. Your leader, Che Mensah and, 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 and Afenyo Maki, were sitting in the chair. They didn't ask you to walk out. OPK, Opoku and San Davis asked you to walk out. You, you see, and you, you, see, you, see you did not consider the people of Menshia North. Just, you stood up and walked see, out with the, the first timer and walked out on the speaker when you were supposed to be there to approve your president's budget, a budget that was brought by your president. You walked out on it. You walked out the, the first time in the history. Uh, uh, you have gone down budget, in history. I can see, please, when you were speaking, I was quiet. You, you, you have I gone down the ominous part of our parliamentary history that worked out on their own president's budget. You did that. All right, hold, hold, not on hold, the instructions hold, hold. of your leadership. I'm coming. Not on the instructions of your All right. leadership. On All the right. instructions of All right. the first timer All right. who had not you, been Sam. spent a Thank year you, in Sam. parliament. Thank and you, you Sam. want to sit here and pontificate. Look, it is this dishonesty Akwesi, that I spoke about. I see 30 seconds to respond. 30 seconds. I, I, I have the one major issue I want us to look at. 30 seconds. We, we've, we've, we've not worked out on our, our president's budget. Our budget has been approved. And second, we send warnings to our leadership. That shows the level of attitude of intolerance. I didn't send any warning in to any leadership. I said we have you, you said, you said it right now. Yes. Ho, 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 you said it. That you sent you sent warnings to your leaders. 
that you've told your leaders that they cannot go and even have consensus and come and tell you you are never going to agree up until 2020. It's, it's down to your own understanding. When I tell you what is the position of and the purpose, it is not me sending a warning. You see, you need to understand, you are the one talking that about is, the use of words. When I say that we that have had a conversation and this is the position of the caucus, it is not me sending a warning. It is a known position. And I can see that is why at this point, throughout the Christmas break, on the E-Levy, did your leadership meet with our leadership? You see, yeah. that's what I'm saying that... If you are not privy, if you are not privy to information... Please, please, just please. there was no such right. thing. Laruna Idrisi made this Let's on the you, floor of the house. Gentlemen, you hold it, you don't pay attention in the chamber. Oye, oye, Laruna said it on the floor. That the whole period, the whole period of the Christmas break, the finance minister, government, nobody... In the chamber, I do. Oye, Sam George, oye. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. Let me just... Let me just do this. That is the problem that they have. All they right. Let the, the people outside. All know right. They are engaging and they are representing them. All right. Uh, uh, you who can about the fact that we've lost a sitting member of parliament. I'll start with you, Akwesi. I'll come back to you and then I'll give the final bite to Sam George and we are done. So quickly, the dollar is galloping against the CD. We are losing ground. Uh, fuel prices have broken the eight. The dollar could also break the eight. Your quick take on that and then add whether you've heard about this bit about a member of parliament, unfortunately, passing on to glory. Quickly. I, I believe you're also watching global events and events that are happening in this world. I mean, if you talk about fuel prices breaking the aid, currency depreciations and the rest, in this current situation, you see, when we are doing contextual analysis, put things in proper, now you have Russia and Ukraine and the whole world. Now we have fuel prices. Yeah, but yeah, some are faring better. Our, our CD is the worst depreciated show, show, currency show in, no, in Africa. And, and looking at the way things are going, it's, it's getting even worse. Don't, don't, don't go on those tangents. You, you talk Why about not? Some are faring better. Why Tell not? When, when the CD was the best performing currency, Africa, we touted it. If, Africa, when it's the Africa, worst, we should tout it as well. Go in, 2000, go in 2005, 2015, when, when the world was not in a meltdown, attacking Ukraine, and fuel prices escalating. The CD was the worst performing currency in Africa, wasn't it? Now we have a global meltdown that is not only affecting Ghana, okay. but affecting the world. All right. Go so, to places in Europe. So, so I, 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 I get the point. I get the point, Akwesi. So basically, so it has passed on to glory. Has, I, have you caught wind of I, that? I, 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 I haven't. The last time I had information, that was about 12 a.m. He was alive. 12 a.m. today, he was Thank alive. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't had information as to that. Thank yes. you, Akwesi. Uh, Sam George, so your take on the two as well. CD to dollar and then the loss of an anybody, MP. Very anybody, quickly. Anybody we don't have time. Wants, uh, anybody who wants to assume that the situation we face with our fuel prices is as a result of international market prices is simply playing the ostrich. International market prices are going up. Ghana practices with the crisis in Ukraine. It's possible that we should have seen a marginal increase. But the astronomical increases we have seen in this country has been on the back of the poor performance of our CD. When you go to Togo, he's talking about Europe. Go to Togo, fuel prices are not increasing that much. Go to Burkina Faso, fuel prices are not increasing that much. The problem is the mismanagement of our city by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, head Thank of the you. economic management team, and Ken Furiata, minister of finance. On the issue of, is that when I wake up in the morning and I'm able to move, it's not my making. It's the making of the Lord Most High. I don't play politics with anybody's health. And so I would not comment until there is an official communication. The gentleman in question is somebody I worked with closely for four years on the communications committee. He has my prayer and my thoughts for his speedy recovery. Any, 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 any rumors are not anything. I will put that out officially. Until anything is of that nature is done, he has my thoughts and my prayers for his speedy recovery. Because health is not something I play politics with. We are sitting here this morning. We don't know what will happen to us this afternoon. So health, not me. So I would not comment on any such rumors. They are unfortunate. If anything, yes. how do you say thank you? In, in Bochumka. Bochumka. Mochumika. Mochumika. Babesina. Honorable Kunedu, Medasi Bibri. This Medasi Bibri, Nami Shao. Onka. 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 Onka.